Hey everybody, thanks for tuning in. I'm George Connolly with Scratch Golf Tips. Today we're looking at the golf swing of Annika Sorenstam, one of the absolute greats in women's golf. 10 major championships, 72 individual wins on the LPGA Tour. One of the best there is, a class act in professional golf as well, and a golf swing that so many people love and so many people can learn from. So in this video, I'm gonna be breaking down Soren Sam's swing, most particularly her silky smooth swing rhythm and swing tempo, and how we can take this motion and help our own golf swings with it. One of the mental notes that Annika has in her golf swing is a one, two, three count. And she uses this not only on the takeaway, but the through swing. So on her way up, she has a very standard one, two, three count. And on three, she then begins her transitionary move. And from that top of the backswing through the ball, she will once again count one, two, three. Now, this is a very helpful way to keep you on plane and keep your swing in rhythm. Because what a lot of people will do is when they want to swing the club fast, for whatever reason, they're going to want to take the club away away very fast. When in reality, if you take that club away very fast, often at the top of your transition, you're going to become very out of sync. You're going to really struggle keeping your arms in sync with the rest of your body. If the rest of your body comes uncoiled before the arms do, things can get really dicey. So next time you're on the range, even exaggerate it, make it nice and slow in your takeaway. One, two, three. One, two, three. Some people even benefit from having a little bit of a pause at the top of the backswing just for the sake of drills on the range. But have that count be something that's comfortable for you, but it certainly feels slower than what you're normally doing. If you can start off by setting a good foundation of having a one, two, three count with your takeaway, then your through swing inadvertently will actually become slower and more controlled. And obviously, when you, when you hear of a slower golf swing, you think, oh, that's not good. I'm not going to hit my my shots nearly as far, but if you're slowing it down and staying more controlled, you're going to make better contact and your swing rhythm will give you better shots and more controllable distances. And that slower, more controlled golf swing will not only give you better striking, but with better striking comes better accuracy and distance control. Another great tip that Annika has spoken about before is that she likes to feel a six out of 10 in terms of swing speed on all of her clubs. Meaning if you think about the hardest you can swing a golf club, that would be a 10 10 and barely swinging the golf club would be a one. She's just above halfway swinging the golf club. I'm guessing most amateurs at home and most people who are watching this video at home are thinking, well, geez, I, I swing my irons at an eight out of 10 and my driver's a nine or 10 out of 10. You know, I know for a lot of people off the tee, when you get that driver in hand, you want to swing as hard as possible. And I understand that, but keeping things succinct, keeping them controlled is going to yield better results. So next time you're over a pitching wedge shot, think six out of 10. Maybe a long iron shot, a four iron in hand, think six out of 10. Now you have a driver, you're on a par four, you have plenty of plenty of distance that you need to get the ball down in order to make a good score, six out of 10. Don't waver in that thinking. It's gonna be tricky at first, obviously work on it on the range, and inadvertently, you're probably still going to swing at your driver a little bit harder than a pitching wedge. That's just the nature of the sport, it's muscle memory, it's what your brain knows. But just in having a little bit of a mental tune-up before your shots, 6 out of 10. I'm going to swing this club at 60%. I guarantee you, if you hit 10 driver shots on the range with your normal swing, and then you hit 10 shots on the range with the 6 out of 10 ideology in your head, and that's something you're focused on in terms of your swing rhythm, those 10 shots where you're thinking 6 out of 10, they may not go as far, but you're not going to lose 50 yards. You're going to lose a couple yards, but they are absolutely going to be more accurate, more controllable, and and after time, after working on this rhythm, after working on a pre-shot routine, you're going to be more comfortable swinging your driver with 6 out of 10. Just think if someone gave you the task to hit a golf ball as close to the center, say it was some kind of contest, and if you hit the golf ball as close to the center of your club as possible, you win some kind of prize. Would you swing at 100%? Or would you swing much slower, maybe close to 60% per se? If you reverse engineer it that way, it actually makes total sense to slow the swing down. So the reason why these silky smooth golf swings look that way is because they're really not straining too much. They're not swinging out of their shoes. This isn't a long drive competition. If you want to be a good golfer, if you want to be a professional golfer, you need to be accurate and consistent. And having a swing motion that is smooth with a nice buttery tempo is a great way to do so. Let me know in the comment section down below your thoughts on Annika's swing. It is one of the great golf swings in professional golf, and there's so much to learn 
learn from it. I hope I could highlight some of the benefits of a better swing rhythm in this video. As always, thank you all very much for watching. Play well and take care.